Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlan, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Wolf Richter, publisher of WolfStreet.com. He's speaking to us from San Francisco. Welcome back to the show, Wolf. Thanks for having me back, Jim. Big cities, uh, Toronto reporting a loss of 50,000 people over the past year. Apparently, they're running out of New York and San Francisco as well. Where are these people going and why are they leaving the big smokes, as they like to call them? Yeah, I mean, this is a, this is a phenomenon that is, uh, uh, very peculiar and, and, uh, but it, it is not very pronounced. So in, in San Francisco, for example, we can just see it everywhere. You know, there, there's just a few people. We got the budget data from the city. And there's, I mean, nobody really knows how many people have left and, and meaning to work remotely or because they've lost their jobs. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of the, uh, oil companies had the headquarters there. They moved those to Houston and that was a, a gigantic drain on, on highly paid jobs that left. And, and this city never really recovered. So it, it, uh, <laughs> it, it is a very interesting thing that they do to try to attract the talent. Miami is doing similar things. They're trying to attract talent. I mean, they're all out there trying to get these uh, work from anywhere people. And, uh, uh, you know, ski resorts <laughs> are seeing them coming in and, and uh, you know, trying to set up permanent shop there and those kinds of things. So, uh, in like in the Sierra, uh, it would, you know, just a three hour, four hour drive from San Francisco. Uh, now they're talking about a housing boom there. Um, and, and it's just amazing how these people are spreading out, skyrocketed, rents have plunged, rents in San Francisco are down 27%, uh, from, uh, July 2019. And, you know, these are the, the these are the dollar signs attached to population moves. So we, we don't really count where people, people move to, but we don't know how many people have left. But we see what's left behind, which is vacant condos, vacant apartments, uh, prices are coming down, offices are empty down the Sutbury's market, and then they spread out, these people spread out to other areas. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, this is going to be one of the fascinating stories in the next year or two to see Number one, where all these people went, and we've seen housing markets boom in the most unlikely places where suddenly people show up in relatively large numbers and, and drive up local housing costs. And uh, and then the second question will be, will they actually stay there? You know, can you, if you've lived for 20 years in a big city or longer, if you've grown up in a big city, can you actually uh, enjoy long-term living in a small town? Is that something you really want? And some people will say, yeah, and, and others will go nuts, and then we'll go back to the big city. And uh, so this is uh, this is going to be an experiment, I think, in in in, in people movement. And uh, uh, the housing market is showing just how much turmoil there is uh, in in the country right now over this. Well, we're also seeing a phenomena in rural Alberta and British Columbia where people cannot find a place to rent. So they've moved out of the big city, but they're not buyers, they're just renters. Is that happening in the U.S.? Yeah, rents have certainly uh, surged in some of the uh, cities that are close to the Bay Area or in the outer fringes of the Bay Area, for example. Uh, we've seen the same thing in New York City where rents in Manhattan now have plunged and once you go further out, uh, rents are, are are jumping. Yeah, people can find an apartment, but they have to pay more maybe than than somebody else would have had to pay a year ago. And uh, uh, I mean, we've seen rents in uh, Newark, New Jersey, across uh, the Hudson from Manhattan, uh, skyrocket. And um, uh, and it may be difficult now to find a place there. I mean, obviously, this is a very short trip from Manhattan, and 
And uh, so if somebody wants to live there, uh, that, that will be that be an interesting, quick move to do. And uh, But the housing market wasn't prepared for that. No one is prepared for these kinds of massive shifts in population. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so that's, I, I can see where this could be difficult in some communities find, finding an apartment. And, and, yeah, the reaction of the market is rents will just skyrocket. As soon as apartment inventory becomes scarce and there are more people looking than availability, uh, the, the asking rents will just skyrocket. We, that, that, but that's a logical consequence. We'll have more with Wolf Richter right after this. Value from success, growth, and discovery. Golden Arrow Resources is a well-funded gold copper exploration company with proven management and prospective properties in Chile, Argentina, and Paraguay. Golden Arrow trades on the Toronto Venture Exchange, symbol GRG, on Frankfurt, symbol G6A, and the OTCQB, symbol GARWF. For more information, visit us at goldenarrowresources.com or call Sean at 778-686-0135. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome back. We're speaking with Wolf Richter. Wolf, what do you expect to happen with the U.S. dollar and interest rates? Well, so interest rates um, in the U.S. Treasury market have, the long-term interest rates have risen. Uh, they've doubled <laughs> over the past uh, four months, five months. And they remain low. So the 10-year yield is, is still uh, very low. It's it's uh, right now at about 1.1%. Uh, which would have been a record low uh, before the pandemic, uh, but it was at half a percent uh, in August. So it, since then, it has doubled. Uh, the 30-year yield has jumped up uh, a lot more than that. And uh, so this will gradually uh, push up interest rates, but it hasn't happened yet. So the... Uh, yeah, you know, the the spread between the two is, is is kind of what matters. And some mortgage rates, for example, are, are still very low. They've ticked up a little bit, but they're still very 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 low, very close to record lows. Uh, the junk bond yields are at record lows. Um, so it hasn't moved across the market yet, but uh, in the treasury market, uh, uh, long term yields have have jumped significantly, and so this will gradually fade into first in the mortgage market and then eventually in, in, into other uh, uh, corporate debt markets. Uh, in terms of the dollar, yeah, you know, the dollar is right now incredibly short. Everybody expects it to fall further, and it has fallen uh, a fairly good amount. Um, I, I think when there's so much short interest in the dollar, that's a sign that that probably uh, it it sort of reached the the bottom of of where it's going to be for a while. Uh, the Fed has not made any efforts to tamp down on the rising long term interest rate. It seems like it's welcoming them, so uh, that would uh, uh, provide uh, some would eventually cool the market down a little bit in some of these debt instruments, including the housing market. You know, so when, when long-term treasury rates go up, the mortgage rates are, are tracking it. And, and so we'll eventually see some of that. And, and I think as interest rates go up a little bit, and we're not talking about by huge amounts, but a little bit, that will put a little bit of uh, strength under the dollar. And it appears that the Fed is welcoming this. So uh, they're not, uh, they're not even they're not even thinking about thinking about raising the short term interest rates, but I think it looks like they're welcoming the increase in long term interest rates, and they're they have refused to do anything about it, um, and uh, they expect that probably to to cool the markets a little bit, and and uh, which would help strengthen the dollar. I think as long as interest rates remain low, will uh, quality value real estate remain interesting. 
I don't think I've ever seen a, a real estate bubble uh, like we've got right now. I mean, there's a total frenzy that's going on right now. And um, there are people in the industry, uh, a large number of people in the industry that are now saying this is not sustainable. This is completely crazy. And uh, so this is probably one of the times where uh, you want to think twice before you buy. Um, yeah, the interest rates are low. Yes, but when the house prices are so inflated and if it's such a surge in prices so quickly, um, you know, the, the, you, you could be, uh, in, in, in trouble if you, if you bought now. Um, and, you know, so I don't know that there, uh, that, that there are good values out there. Uh, I, I just, I would be very hesitant to buy right now. I mean, this is this. I, I've never seen a frenzy like this. This is completely incredible. Um, it's different than the housing bubble, the frenzy that we had in in two thousand five, uh, two thousand four through two thousand six. Uh, it has different elements to it. Uh, There's different dynamic to it, uh, but uh, the results are kind of the same. And and uh, so this this is. A, I think this would be a very scary moment. Uh, to be buying a house. We'll have more with Wolf Richter right after this. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Wolf Richter. Wolf, are people taking advantage of these ultra-low interest rates and buying new cars? Yeah, so the auto loans have come down a little bit, but not as much as you'd think, especially on the used vehicle side. You know, it's harder to get cheap loans there. Uh, so they've, they've ticked down, but they're, they're relatively high compared to, say, a, a 30 year fixed rate mortgage, uh, loan in the United States where interest rates are now below 3%. And 3%, you know, meaning for, it's a fixed rate for 30 years. So this is, uh, you know, this, this is a very low rate. You don't get those. Uh, with auto loans, it, it's it's quite a bit higher unless it's a subsidized rate by uh, by an automaker. Now, people have uh, bought uh, cars in in a fairly large number, but auto sales in 2020 were down a lot in terms of the number of uh, uh, vehicles sold, both both used cars and new vehicles. Um, what has happened is that uh, people have bought more expensive cars and that prices have surged uh, on, for the same vehicle. So, for example, we've, we've had like a, a 15% price increase in used vehicles over the summer. And that has unwound just a little bit, but not much. So used vehicles are much more expensive now than they were a year ago. And in, in new vehicles, we've also seen price increases. But even more importantly, we have seen a huge move upscale where every automaker is trying to sell more expensive vehicles uh, with more features and more options and just a bigger price tag. And uh, in new vehicles, the average transaction price, which is a, a, a metric the industry follows, uh, and that's what a customer actually pays. So the average transaction price is up by nearly 10% uh, year over year in, in, in December. So this is a huge increase uh, in, in terms of what people are paying uh, for the vehicles. The overall numbers in t- terms of numbers of vehicles sold are down. But given that uh, customers are paying so much more for the vehicles, uh, the revenues that these automakers uh, obtain in the United States are down uh, a lot less than the, the vehicle sales. So the, this is a move, uh, and of course this is kind of the, the K-shaped economy, you know, where the bottom has fallen out for lower paid workers, for people working in restaurants and bars and, and, and other establishments that are, that are shut down in part, you know, and, and or people with higher incomes have switched to work from home, 
and um, maybe um, they uh, uh, had pretty good incomes before, and they have, and, and so these these shifts to more expensive vehicles have essentially pulled out the industry. But in terms of number of units sold, uh, it was a fairly steep decline in 2020. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, the U.S. and Canada SUVs were the mania. Are they still uh, the strongest selling sector? Yeah, in the U.S., it's pickup trucks. Yeah, they're the number one seller right now. Uh, SUVs are very strong, too. And in terms of smaller vehicles, it's a compact SUV. Uh, that's really popular. Cars essentially are dead. And, of course, compact SUV shouldn't even be called an SUV. It should be called a car. So we have a little bit of a classification problem because these compact SUVs are based on car chassis and they have car engines and are you know, essentially cars, except they're just a little higher, a little further on the ground. So, but essentially the big sellers were pickups and SUVs. Wolf, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thank you, Jim, for having me. My guest has been Wolf Richter, publisher of WolfStreet.com. He was speaking to us from San Francisco. If you have any questions for Wolf or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at HowStreet. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.